Ignore that word death. Ignore it, okay? Because I don't want anyone to think that, okay, well, technically then, like, the lower the depth is really like the middle. No. Take that out of your mind right now, okay? Ignore that. Just look at the numbers, okay? So, so let's find our amplitude. Let's look at our data. Where is our maximum height of our water? 1600. 1600, not 42. Okay? So there's our max. What's our minimum? Five point six, right there. There's our minimum. Okay. So technically, you know, these are our y's, these are our x's. So we already know our a, we already know our amplitude. It's going to be our max. Is it plus or is it minus? Minus, minus our min divided by two, and that's going to give you, give us our value for a. So it's nine point two minus five point six divided by two. Confirmation. Good stuff. And since we already know what our max and our min are, let's just go ahead and find our D, which is max plus min divided by 2. Sign curve. Okay? 
But for the sake of all having the same equation, which one do you want to use? Okay. So we have our equation y equals a cosine b x minus 4 c plus 7.4. And there's our model for this data. Let's see how well we did. Go to your calculator. Let's type in this data. To type in your data, you need to go to a table. You have to go to stat. <coughs> then go to edit. You actually have to type in your data because we basically want to plot all this. Now, if your stuff has anything in L1 or L2, just go up to where L1 is highlighted. Right, so say, you know, I have this data in here and I want to clear it out. Go up, press clear, click enter, and it clears the whole table. Or clears that whole column. So let's type it in. We have 0, 2, 4. You click enter after every time to get your data in there. And then in L2, you put your water. I don't want to keep flipping back and forth. Make sure again you click enter after every one. <laughs> so you didn't have L1 or L2? Okay. <laughs> if you accidentally delete your column, say instead of pressing clear, you press delete. You have to get it back. It won't work if it's not L1, L2, L3, so on and so forth. So what you do is go to stat, go to option 5, set up editor, and then click enter. So stat, option 5, set up editor, click enter. So that way when you go back to your list, there it is. It basically resets everything. So press clear, not delete, because it literally deletes everything. <laughs> Alright, so now what you need to do is you need to go to your y equals. Okay, we're trying to see if the equation we came up with actually was a pretty good equation. Now remember, it's not going to exactly go through the, the points because it wasn't perfectly, you know, symmetrically spaced and the same maximum, minimum, whatever, whatever. Now, this is when you need to turn your plot one on. So I put something inside of my list. Whenever you're dealing with statistics, hit stat, you want your plot one on. Anytime it's not statistics, you know, take it off. So, go up, click enter, make sure it's highlighted. Is everyone's plot one highlighted? Cool, so now let's type in our equation. We have a 1.8 cosine pi divided by 6, open parenthesis, x minus 4, double close it, Plus 7.4. Before you click graph, don't click graph yet. Get it in there. We need to change our window and we also need to change our. We have to change our mode. Depending on what the last thing you did on your calculator, you might be in degree. You need to be in radian. Make sure you're in radian. Make sure you're in radian. Sure right there. And then let's change our window. Because right now my window is from negative 5 to 8 and then 0 to 200. That's what I did last in my calculator. I need 0 to 18 hours. I need 0 to 18 hours. So that's going to be on my x. And then I, I think my, my lowest time was 5.6 and my highest was 9.2. So I, I think I'm going to go from 0 to 10. Just so I can see everything. Okay? So now when you click graph, it's going to pop up the dots that represent our data, and then there's the curve that we came up with, and the fact it's hitting every single point says we did a pretty good job. <laughs> so, there we go for that particular problem. Now, what I, I'll say this again, because someone's going to forget. Plot 1 should only be on if you are involving the, the table that's inside a stack. 
If you plugged in some data here and you're trying to use that, then yes, your plot one should be highlighted. But if you're doing anything else, say you're just trying to grab any old random trigonometric uh, circular function and it doesn't involve any data, turn it off. How do I turn it off? How do I turn it off? How do I turn plot one off? Go up and then press enter. And now it's good. Now when you graph this now, you just get the curve with no point, and that's fine, okay? But if I try to grab any old other curve and plot one was on, I might run into some issues, okay? Questions? Yeah, so say like it was like way below all the dots. Now let's, that let us know that we probably didn't get our vertical shift right. Or if it was too, say it didn't line up exactly like the max didn't line up with the curve, then we knew that we didn't get our, our horizontal shift right. You see what I mean? All right. Let's look at the next one. Okay? This one breaks it down a little bit more. I want you guys actually to do this one on your own. Okay? All right, so for this one. You have to state, uh, use that to estimate your period and for two vertical shift and horizontal translations and write a function for it. So what you guys get for your uh, amplitude? 3.6. 3.6? What you get for your period? What's your period? No period, period, period. Six. Six. So they... Yes. Okay, so then your B would be what? Five or three? Okay. Um, vertical translation, what was D? And what was C? Three. Three. Okay. C was three because it was the horizontal distance to reach your max. Okay. Just think about it. If you want, here's your max right here. One, two, three. If you were to plot it, there's your max right there. That is three units from your y axis to reach that maximum height. That's why c is three. So you should have had y equals 3.6 cosine pi over 3 x minus 3 plus 5.8. Yes? Yeah? So let's graph it. I already have my data in my table. I'm going to go to my y equals. I'm going to type this in just to make sure you guys did a good job. Trust you. I do need to check. Uh, Let me change my window from, I'm going to do 1 to 11, just put this on my table, and I'm going to do, I guess you're the to change this still work, right? Yeah. Yeah. Did you have a plot? Yeah, I like plot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one thing I'm saying. All right, hold on, I'm going to stop this. Wait, how do you stop it? Yeah. yeah. On, on, on yours, you Press second on, you know, when your calculator will like it'll like stop the feature. Sometimes it does. Sometimes. Um, so. Were you just not figuring this out? No. Should I tell what I figured out in college algebra? What? I found out how to do a base on a logarithm. Oh my god. There is that. There is that feature. Yes, I found that.
and then move it to the left of your original cosine function. Since your cosine function is already pushed over to three, you just subtract. So, but that's not what the question asks us to do. It asks us to do it in our calculus. This is what you do. If I ready to go to your home screen, second mode. You go to stat. You go over to calc. And then you want to go to option C. I press the up arrow to take you down to the bottom of the list. Sign red. Okay? Now, if your calculator looks like mine, then you're fine. If it doesn't, don't worry. I'll show you exactly what you type in and yours is going to look like mine. Okay? Iterations. Iterations basically, make sure yours looks like mine. Okay. Iterations just basically means like how many cycles do you want to graph? We can leave it at three if it really doesn't matter. Uh, your X's should be your L1 list and your Y should be your L2 list, right? X and Y. Um, what's our period? Period is six, so we're going to calculate ignore that. Now it says store this. This basically allows you to take, because it's going to give us the equation on our screen, on our home screen. This option is going to allow us to actually paste the equation, the full thing, no rounded answers, into the y equals. So we won't have to worry about writing out every decimal. So to do that, you have to go to bars. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Go over to Y bars, yeah. go to function, and click Y1. So that basically is going to store it into our Y1. Go down to calculate, and there it is. A is still 3.6, D is still 5.8, but of course, this the B and the C are going to be off a little bit because it's actually finding like the most exact B and C that's going to allow you to... Is everybody still with me? That's going to actually allow you to, you know, go through your data the best possible, okay? So here's your equation for sine. It's going to be y equals 3.6 sine. Of course, we're going to round our b to three significant figures, so that's going to be 1.05 x minus, or actually, Mm -hmm. Why you know the, the way it's set up here? Since it's a plus there, it's going to be a minus. So it's going to be minus 1.57 and then plus 5.8. Like like <laughs> now, for those of you all who don't have that, when you go to sign reg, it just pops up sign reg in parentheses, correct? <laughs> oh, there's no, that's right, there's no parentheses. So what, uh, what you do is you go to second, you press the second button, you press the one button, you press the comma button, you press the second button, you press the two button, and then you press the comma button. So right now, your thing should say L1 comma L2 comma, correct? Now you have to go and store it, like it's like how we did. So you still have to go through the process of pressing bars. Go over to Y bars. Go to function. And go to Y1. Ah. So then y Y1 pops up, correct? So when you click enter, It'll give you what we got, what we have, correct? There you go. So you write that down, and when you go to your y equals, looky, looky, looky. It's all there. And when you click graph, I should have done y too, so then that way I could have kept the cosine one up there. So I'm gonna, actually, I'm going to do that. I'm going to graph that one in red. So it's cosine pi over 6, right? X minus 3. So the power six or power nine? I'm going to grab both of them in there just so you guys can see. And I got the color option, so. And then plus 5.8. So there we go. There's the sign graph. The linear regression gives you the most exact thing that it can to fit the data. You see how like almost perfect it's going to those dots? And then here's our cosine function. Going right over it. So easy. 
Oh. I actually did a pretty good job. Well, we had. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> As it should. If it didn't look the same, then that would let us know that we didn't do a good job on doing the cosine with my hand. All right. Questions? This one. We'll let you guys do this one. You're given the equation. A couple of questions that you have to answer. All right, so this one, they gave you the actual function. And it says, can you use the model the height of a passenger above the boarding platform of the London Eye? The London Eye is a really big Ferris wheel out overseas. Use this function to estimate the height of the passenger above the platform at 8 minutes and 19 minutes. That means you're going to plug in these numbers for for T. So you're going to make T equal to 8, T equal to 19. So you go to your calculator. I'll type in 8, the function, making sure I am in radian mode. And did you guys get 74.6 meters feet? Meters? What is it? Is meters? Okay. You do the same thing with 19. Hey, shortcut, I think I showed you this, but if I haven't, Second, enter, brings up exactly what you just typed in before. I'm going to go back and I'm going to change that 8 to a 19. However, 8 only is one space, 19 is two spaces, so I'm going to insert an extra space. So in that way, I'll delete everything. And did you get uh, 113? Now it says use this function to estimate the passenger, how long it takes the passenger to reach a height of 100. That's basically 100 equals this entire function. How do you figure that out? Divided everything by 2 pi over 3, sure. I mean 30, sure. unless you're making sure that's in parentheses, and then, and then add 15. That will get you your time. That is how you would do the process, showing your work. Oh. What's another way you do it? Okay, another way you do it is by graphing. This is plug 100 into y1, plug the other equation into y2, and see where they intersect each other. That's another way you do it. Of course, I'm going to turn off my plot because I don't need it. <laughs> X minus 15. We can't really plug in T, so I'm using X instead. Delete everything else that's there. Probably should have figured out the first one. I definitely need to change my window. I definitely need to change my window. I'm going to make my X from 0 to 30. And let's say 120. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Okay. 
can't quite see my thing. There's one complete cycle, and there's the hundred. I just need to see where the two curves intersect each other. They intersect here as well as here. So how long does it take it to first reach 100 meters? We're looking for that first time it reaches 100 meters, which is right here. So I go to what to find that intersection? Second trace, five. The curve must be at the maximum. There it is. Enter, enter, enter. 9.90. You gotta be careful because remember, when you're taking the cosine inverse, this one right here more than likely gave you. I don't know if you guys remember inverse of the calculus. When you're doing inverse of the square root of 2 over 5, it probably gave you the negative one. change the sign, and then continue where you are with the number. So, in other words, just graph it. Just, yep. just do it. Just okay. graph it. If you did have to show, this is what you would go through, though. And then, the thing is, like, what, the, what they were saying was they were running to an issue that they got the other answer, the other intersection. But remember, there was an identity earlier in this unit that said that cosine theta equals negative cosine theta. And so once you took the inverse right here, whatever that answer was, you would have had to change the sign to get the first one. That's all. <sighs> Question on this. All right, the last one. Uh, this is one pulled from IV exam, only the first two parts, because the other two parts dealt with derivatives. The following diagram shows a water wheel with a bucket. The wheel rotates at a constant rate in an anti-clockwise, counterclockwise direction. The diameter of the wheel is 18 meters, which means what? Diameter is 8. What else do we know? Radius is 4. It says the center of the wheel A is 2 meters above water level. So we know from A down is 2 meters. After t seconds, the height of the bucket above the water level is given by this function. Show that a equals 4. Show that a equals 4. Okay, you can't just draw any picture and say, hey, yeah, this is 4, so it's 4. Okay? A represents your what? And we have a form to find our amplitude, which is? This is the easiest way to show it algebraically. What's our maximum height of our? Um, water wheel. It's going to be 6 because think about it, water level clearly is at 0, so the height is 6 whatever, meters, 6 meters above water level. Minus, what's our min? It is negative 2. It has to complete a full radius, so if it's 2, if A is located 2 meters above water level, then the rest of the wheel is 2 meters below water level. Divide that by 2. Two negatives make a eight. When you divide by two, you do indeed get four. Then it says the wheel turns at a rate of one rotation every 30 seconds. That means it's making its complete round. The bucket is going around and coming back to that same spot in 30 seconds. Hence, the cycle is going to repeat itself. So 30 represents what? The period. So if the period equals 30, to find B, you would set that equal to do the math process of multiplying both sides by B, dividing both sides by 30, and then reducing. And that's how you get pi over 50. These are more like your type of problems, application-wise, that you're going to get with circular functions. It's talking about a water wheel. It's talking about a Ferris wheel a spring, uh, a tidal wave reaching high tide and low tide, high tide max, low tide min, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? But the main thing is to wrap all this up, okay? Remember, you need your four pieces. You need your amplitude, which you can find by doing what? Max minus min divided by two. Your vertical translation. 
Max plus some in divided by two. To find your B, you need to know your what? Period. Your period. Your period is what? Max to max or min to min. If it didn't give you both maxes or both mins, you could take one max and one min and then multiply by two. Or it's however long it takes to, you know, rotate all the way around. And the last thing is your horizontal shift, which is what? The time it takes to reach a maximum because what types of equations are we writing here? Cosine. 